The UFL Gambling Podcast Week 3 Preview Picks and DFS episode uh, is brought to you by Underdog Fantasy. Yes, play their uh, pick them, fantasy pick them for a chance to win 100 times the amount of money you could enter in UFL, uh, MLB, NHL, golf, NBA, and much, much more. Sign up today using the promo code TCE SGPN to get a 100% deposit match as well as a, uh, yeah. Just kick it on over there. Um, we're also brought to you by AVO, uh, the premier arbitrage sports betting tool that is AVO. Uh, use their tool to bet both sides and lock in a profit. Access their platform uh, for free at arbsversodds.com. That's A R B S versus odds.com. Plus, in honor of Masters Week, the Golf Gimmick Podcast guys are giving away a tailor made Spider X putter for free enter at sports gambling podcast.com slash masters. That offer goes all the way through the masters. Uh, so hop on in and get yourself a free putter. And remember as always folks too, let it ride. Hey, what's up you degenerate gamblers. This is bill Burr and you're listening to S G P N let it ride baby. <laughs> yes, you do. <laughs> Welcome. <laughs> Welcome to the UFL Gambling Podcast. Uh, Week three preview picks at DFS. Yeah, I mean, we're supposed to be. We can't even get our own goddamn music. All right. <sighs> I'm working on it. I got a million things we're doing. Yeah, you got o- you got juice. The juice is dead. All right. All right. OJ Simpson's passed away. Mm. He was a huge UFL fan. And yeah. uh, you know, wanted to be a part time owner. Couldn't couldn't they couldn't get in, but uh, you know, it was very close to the Vegas Vipers team a year ago in the XFL. Uh, but here we are. We got week three upon us. The juice is loose. And uh, yeah, I'm excited to talk about week three and to dominate. I am six, one and one ATS in uh, the eight games that have happened. Mm. So I, I just like to talk a lot of shit when I can. Uh, if you're wondering who the hell you're listening to, that's fair. My name is Corbis swinging dead to base dead. AKA pick Dundee. That's not a pick. This is a pick. He was raised in the land down under where a man thinks on his feet speaks with his fists and lives by his wits when dundee happened he was a superstar and you're nothing but a chameleon lemon-headed coward terrorist pussy and i'm after you buddy you're gonna pay for it good night the way i feel about dean blandino he's gonna pay for it (laughs) i uh I'm excited for week three. I think the matchups for week three are better than week two. If that makes sense. Absolutely. Uh, I am joined by the host of the Bottom Line Bob's podcast. They call him the man in the box, a.k.a. the bet detective. Give it up for the one and only C.J. Sullivan. Yes. What's up, fellas? Good to be back in the saddle. And absolutely, these, we got three games that are basically coin flips. So, and we did not have, we only had one that was a, a tight line last week. And that turned out to be a needed two and a half points as the uh, miraculous comeback. I know we were, we were grilled in the Reddit, Reddit threads for not praising the comeback enough and calling it cheap mm. and dirty from the rules. But uh, I didn't see that one, but I got to, <laughs> I got to check it out. Well, you were taking most of the day, most of the blows, so it's tough to pick it all up. And you can't, you know, get it all uh, focused on one because uh, some were attacking you, some were attacking your burner accounts, some were attacking the oh, business yeah. account. You know, uh, yeah, that's what I'm saying. Someone you said get it, you uh, get it from you get it from all angles. Someone said that someone from St. Louis must have fucked my wife. <laughs> Appreciate that one. They just they're obviously Appreciate not that one. They although they did go back and listen to all the shows, they obviously wouldn't. <laughs> Listen to most shows. They would know if they listened to all the shows that you just hate domes that much. That yeah, you cut you. You're gonna talk shit about your team until you get out of the fucking pussy dome. It's true. 
It's true. And, and as far as I know, I don't think anyone from St. Louis fucked my wife, but I am doing the show right now. Um, <laughs> right. Your wife wouldn't go to St. Louis for crying. Yeah. Out she wouldn't go to St. Louis. She didn't even know where it is. She didn't know where the, she wouldn't know where St. Louis is. Uh, we are joined by third man in the booth. He knows where St. Louis is right up the, right up the road. <laughs> yeah, he right is the I-80. host of the old fashioned <laughs> football podcast, which by the way, it's, it's coming next. And your boy Dundee is going to wow. be on the old fashioned football podcast right after this, um, right after this, we're just wow. content machines. Uh, give it up for the host of that. Justin Mark, AKA J Mark. How you doing, brother? Doing good. My my favorite uh, Reddit comment this week is from, mm. and I'm not making fun of their name. This is their actual name that they have associated with themselves. Butt nozzle mm. says mm. five and a half minutes of ads being mad about a great comeback while two thirds weren't sure on last year's rule. Then getting mad about Reddit points or Reddit posts is a choice, I guess. And that's the choice we made. You're damn right. It is. Yeah. Doesn't he have yeah. a battle hawk in his avatar or something like that? 100%. Typical battle hawk fan. <laughs> yeah. Does doesn't even acknowledge that there was two leagues and that we had we were trying to figure out the rules for both because they forming rules. We know the goddamn rules of the XFL, but only but only I also hawk know the rules of being themselves. a complete coward bitch. All right. And he applies for that. All right. <laughs> uh so come see me. Come see me on these streets. In, yeah. in the reddits. All right, Com- let's go. Complain <laughs> about ads. is hilarious. Complain about ads. Cause we get paid to do this shit. Right. You know what I mean? It's like, I, we might be the only UFL podcast that gets paid to do UFL content. You Think about that for a second. Could have ended after that gets paid. The only UFL yeah. podcast that yeah. gets paid. Maybe the only well, UFL gambling podcast. There's not and, a lot of them out there. I'll be honest. There's, judging by the, the Michigan Panthers turnout, we I think we make more money than the Michigan Panthers. And it's funny. <laughs> it, it, it does feel like only, one of the only leagues that we're on the same level with. You know what I mean? So like, when, <laughs> when you talk about other sports, you're like, well, I don't know what those millionaires think, but these guys have real problems <laughs> like us. That's why I love yeah. it. I love yeah. this league. <laughs> Um, yeah, I mean, uh, I, 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 do you guys feel the same that you think week three's sch- schedule is, is better than week twos? Of course. No, nope. like I said before, you got three spreads that are with two and under, you know? So, um, J Mark, and, what uh, do you think? Yeah, I'm sorry. Uh, yeah. I, 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 didn't no, I'm I was done. <laughs> he's, he's just like enough out of CJ. <laughs> yeah. Um, I thought he was done. I thought he stopped. I was, yeah. I was wearing, I'm like, someone get me out of this. I don't, I can't even finish this thought. No, there's exactly. a lot of intriguing matchups, and I think a lot of people are going to be on the wrong sides, including maybe Colby. We'll see. I'm going to beat him. Woo, 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 woo. All right. I like Six, it. one, and one. You're going up. What, what's your overall record in the eight games, J Mark? Uh, we don't need to talk about it. It's all about it's zero and zero this week. Let's go. Ah, yeah. Like a politician. Okay. It, Clean slate. You know, it, it is an election year. Um, <laughs> Uh, Ben Detective, I'm curious though. What are, what are you on the eight games? You're like me. You're some, somewhere close to me. I feel like. Yep. Uh, I, I, I think it's six and two. It's either six and two and five and three. I have to check. Well, we Actually, pushed. Let, we pushed on on one. So you guys all have a right. push. Yeah, definitely. Uh, I might be five, three, and one. Last last week we were, I lost. Uh, the, we we made we, the difference was that we were on St. Louis and you were on Arlington and you won that one. Oh yeah. Other than that, we yeah we had the same record, so I'm that's why that's more. why the, that's why the Battlehawks fans are coming for my wife. You know what I mean? <laughs> that why. they're happy they got the dub. They are, even though Tony Meatball did everything uh, uh, to try to lose that one. Um, but yeah, um, all right. Well, look, uh, let's let's hop into it. But before we hop into it, I want to tell the folks out there. Uh, look, uh, you're listening to the UFL Gambling Podcast on SGPN mm-hmm. and. Uh, you know, in honors of Masters Week, get on over to the Golf Gambling Podcast and subscribe. Yes, the UFL is competing head to head with the Masters. I can dig it uh, as a guy that prefers football over any form of golf. But you might not be that way. You might have two screens up. All right, check out the Golf Gambling Podcast, guys. They're giving away a tailor made Spider X putter. Enter for free sports gambling podcast.com slash masters. You have until the end of the masters to enter. So get on over there and check out the golf gambling podcast. Remember as always folks to let it ride. When I uh, mm-hmm. take the niece and nephew putt putting, how cool am I going to look breaking that bad boy out? Breaking out the tailor made spider. 
Yeah. You golf, J Mark? You don't strike no. me as a golf guy. Yeah, no, he's I don't. Talking, he's talking yeah. about the putt putt. He's talking about the putt putt guy. The putt, the guy putt, putt. Yeah. yeah, anyone, and, anyone, and you know, I would... <laughs> go ahead. No, you, you know, he built the uh, putt putt in his backyard. <laughs> right. He built, right. He definitely built a windmill for sure. <laughs> it's a, it's a, it's a regular size, life size windmill that gives <laughs> power to his title power. Powers the house. <laughs> yeah. Um, uh, game one guys. Uh, how do you feel about the scheduling going right up against? I still would have liked a weekday game. They just don't buy into that though. Mm. They don't do weekday games. And, uh, I, I don't understand why, but here we are 10 AM Pacific DC heading to Arlington, Texas. Take on the winless renegades. Arlington's now laying one. Uh, that last night they were catching one, I believe, mm-hmm. on the maybe one and a half. Uh, the over under set at 43. Money line is to minus 110 on both sides. I'm all over Arlington here because I think Arlington's better than DC. I think mm. DC's off its line looks like a complete pile of shit. And uh, Choctaw Stadium is going to be half empty, but it will be a little more packed than Ford Field. And I think honestly, I think Arlington is much better than Owen two. They just played Birmingham and, and and then the St. Louis game was a coin toss. If Perez, if that guy, if that receiver catches that Perez hits him right in the numbers before that missed field goal, they win that game. If that happens. So mm-hmm. I, I think Arlington is just a lot better than DC right now. I'm laying the one. I also like the over. Yeah. This almost seems not, I wouldn't say obvious, uh, but it's DC's got over inflated lines, obviously from last year. This is a rematch of last year's XFL championship game though. So it is a revenge spot for DC. They might think about this all off season. Also, they're probably thinking about if will they have a job, but they're also, but now that they have a job, they're back and they're worried, you know, and they're going to come against uh, Arlington. So they can't be happy about it. DC, of course, a far superior team last year. Especially to Arlington, and Arlington luck boxed their way in there with the Luis Perez. Um, Arlington not lucky this year. Had with a two, very two difficult games to open up the season with, with Birmingham the best team, and then at St. Louis, uh, the 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 hardest road game there is in the league. So you're right; they're much better than zero and two team. They should they could be pretty much anyone else in there, and they will get to prove it this week. Uh, now they're catching one. I agree with the line switch. The only thing that has me worried about that is that it is a revenge game from the championship. And there is something to that. Although you can't like the way DC has been playing. They were, they were lucky to get out last week with a win, a game they should have smashed at Houston. So give me the over, give me Arlington. I think Perez has a big day against his defense. Against him. Yeah. Although we all know also, if you pressure Perez, that's what I was he, about to say. I think I'm switching to the under. At 43, <laughs> give know. me the under. Seriously, and we all know Greg Williams doesn't give a fuck if the game's on the line. He's still bringing the house, <laughs> even though all you have to do is guard the line, guard the goal line. That's just what Greg Williams does. So Perez will have pressure. So they do have the formula for that, but he didn't have pressure. Didn't uh, uh, the formula didn't work obviously in the championship game? I still like Arlington in this game. I'm still taking the over. I think th- I think they'll make them pay a lot more times, and they'll, they'll get there, and they'll and they'll look bad. But yeah. also, he'll make them pay a lot more, and there'll be a lot, a lot of big play touchdowns for uh, both sides. To be honest with you, I, I've liked, I've liked DC's offense so far. Even that opener, they drove down. They just kicked a lot of field goals. You know, they but they they moved the ball, and they definitely moved the ball last week as well. They they had to pick six, and a lot of a lot of things they've, they've shot themselves in the foot. Um, I got like so, a twenty nine thirteen final. I think the under actually cashes. Going going to the under here. Yeah, but this seems like not a great spot for Arlington to get their first win. I'm with you. I'm with you. J Mark, what are you doing here at Choctaw stadium there? Yeah, I'm with you guys too. Just want to point out. I did see a tweet that was deleted very quickly um, Mm. where somebody said, (laughs) no, no, I won't say who it was from, but somebody in the industry that said DC has to travel to Arlington. Can they do the, uh, the road game and win? They don't have to travel anywhere. They're in Arlington right now. So Mm. don't give me that shit. Uh, But I still Mm. like Arlington Mm. to win this game. I think they are the better (laughs) team. DC has not looked like they've gotten it all together yet, especially like we talked about. They have a lot of roster turnover. Um, I like the under as well. Both these teams, very inefficient once they get inside the 20s. Seems like they have struggle uh, scoring in the red zone. So I I like the under just because of that. They can move the ball well. I don't think either of these defenses really contain the other team. I just don't Mm -hmm. think the offenses are efficient enough. The scary thing is like a pick six or something, right? 
Yeah. Because yeah. both, yeah, you know, with Greg Williams, I feel like they were close. They were close and, a couple times. And with both of the J Mark's favorite quarterbacks going head to head on there, the pick six is always in play with these two the way they had the way they to protect True. them, take care of the ball. Woo! Um yeah. All right. So uh that came on, that came on ESPN, by the way. ESPN uh second game uh coming later though. This is not back to back later at 4 p.m. Pacific. And then Memphis showboats are heading into Penetrope Stadium to take on the Birmingham Stallions. Stallions are laying seven. Over unders at 40 and a half. Uh Memphis is plus 250 on that money line. DK, of course, the odds. And then minus 310 for the Stallions on the money line. Um they are honoring Alex Mago. Did you guys see this? Yes, Mago will be in the house. The goat. The tire in the old number. <laughs> tire in the old number is a bold move, but he did win two championships. Two championships. Now, what's uh, this place called? Protective Stadium, right? I call it Penetrobe Stadium. I like Penetrobe. I love it. Yeah. It's a, that's a uh, office space shout out. Um, yeah. uh, look. Ooh, 10. You get tickets for ten dollars for this game. So I'm saying, and then look, this Birmingham's oh, so this is their home opener. Mm-hmm. They're it's getting their night. rings. They're getting and it's everything. at night. What the hell are you gonna do there? in Birmingham at night? Ooh, all right. Wee. Uh, this is a smash spot. As much as I want to say Memphis, no, no. Like, hey, we were talking about this on the SGP show, and I want your guys' take on this. Yeah. There's only a couple coaches that actually understand when you should go for it. Mm. it. Honestly, that's one of the, one of the things that's plaguing the league to me is like Anthony Beck last year was even worse, I think, but uh, Anthony Beck, uh, John D Filippo, uh, Mike Nolan, who else? Uh, Cause I think Stoops actually goes for it when he's supposed to, but right. those, those three specifically, I think they don't understand when to go for it. They, they, they haven't been a head coach, I guess, long enough where I feel like Stoops and Holtz and uh, what's my guy's name with uh Oh no, I throw Curtis Johnson in there too. They haven't been head coaches long enough where they just don't understand uh, to me what to do in these leagues, especially when you add in the nine point play and the tw- fourth and 12 bullshit. Um, right. I think that matters in a game like this where the spreads minus seven as I'm on the stallions minus seven. I do think the over hits though. I think the stallions, you know, you look back at that game a week ago, Michigan credit to them staying in that game because their red zone defense was so impressive here. Stallions will be able to get what they want. They're going to be able to correct. Skip Holtz was talking about it in the post game. He was upset about the red zone offense. It gets corrected here. They take down the showboats. I like laying the seven. I like over 40 and a half. Sullivan, what are you doing here? <laughs> Just to uh, piggyback what you were saying there about the fourth down and going for it. It's funny. A lot of young coaches, they don't go for it on fourth down because they don't want to get fired. And that's really the only way the, you know, not that you get fired, but to get public reaction to like, that's the only thing they understand more like, Oh, you should have went for it there. You didn't go for it there. So you go for it and miss it. They're like, that's when they get, that's when they get the public heat from it, you know, saying, Oh, well, uh, you know, so if they just avoid that, just avoid any kind of risk. They're like the, the, they, they don't know the other ways I'm fucking up. They just know that I'm not going for and forth. Or, yeah, or I mean, even for Michigan and was like telling the kicker, do you, do you want to kick this? Right. Do you, do you want this? Uh, if not, if not, uh, you know, we'll get, we could punt. Um, yeah. But as far as this game goes, like I think you said, it, at night, home opener, Birmingham, best team in the league. Alex McCoy in, in the house, they're uh, retiring the number. Um, and I'm not a fan of this Memphis this uh, Memphis team. You, know, you guys all sh- cacawed, if you will, when I uh, put them at seven in my power rankings. I think Cook is, is going to get destroyed in this game. I mean, he is their offense. He leads the UFL in total offense because he rushes, he throws, he does everything for him. Um, Memphis also has the best rush defense, but I think that's just because teams couldn't a lot of teams aren't able to run the ball. That's not the case with Birmingham, of course, with my man, CJ. Uh, Marable. Marable. And I think he'll have a nice big game. He'll uh, foreshadow. He's always perennially in my DFS lineup. I love the receivers. You mean, no, uh, Deion Kane's been the guy. Mayor Rogers hasn't done much, but uh, Kevin Austin. Um, I think, this, like you said, this is a smash spot. I think they're going to. I think they're going to blow this team out. I think it's going to, uh, they're going to win by more than double digits. Well, they they had like a what it was a forty four to two win a year ago. 
Yeah, yeah. I mean, I, like think, that. I, think, I think it's gonna be something similar to that. I think it's gonna be something like 34 6, that kind of situation. I, I think it'll be like 20, 29, you know, 16 or something like that. But uh, I don't see how get Memphis, it done. Yeah, I just don't see how Memphis puts up points at all. It might even get in the 30s. Uh, what, I, you like the, the over too, CJ? Well, that's the thing. I don't see Memphis scoring a lot. What is the total here? 41. It's pretty high. But I see 40 and a half out there. 40 and a half. Yeah, I'd lean under if I was going to play the total, to be honest with you, because I, I do think Memphis' defense is good. I'm not saying they're not, they don't have a good defense. Um, Birmingham, not if they're going to set their number, but they're, you know, they're absolutely efficient. I just, and I don't, uh, and I don't, and I don't trust, uh, I don't trust Memphis to, uh, they'd have to get to at least, uh, at least 10 points for us to hit that. And I don't know if they can do that. Yeah. Yeah. J Mark. Uh, what are you doing here? Is this, I got a feeling he might zag here. What's he doing here? J Mark, what are you doing in Birmingham at Penetrobe? June 17th, the stallions beat the showboats 27 to 20 with Cole Kelly as the showboats mm. quarterback. He took us a much better quarterback than Cole Kelly. This team is improved. I think they're going to uh, give him trouble. I think the I Panthers. Think, I think you said that incorrectly though. The showboats beat the stallions, not the stallions beat the showboats. Stallions beat the showboats by seven. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah. I'm sorry. Yeah. Okay. By seven. And now the showboats have a better quarterback. This defense is playing really well. And I think the Panthers showed how you can kind of contain this stallions offense, right? We saw them get kind of contained. I also don't know if this whole two quarterback system is working out very well. Corral, I know he had some nice numbers, but he also, a lot of times he got in there, he looked like he was off pace just a little bit, mm. like he couldn't quite get going. Martinez, great at running the ball. I get that. But uh, it just seems like that's holding them back a little bit. I'm taking the the showboats. I don't think they win this game, but I think they keep it within seven. I think it's probably a four or five point win. Well, here's the thing with taking seven in these leagues where you go for two and three points, seven doesn't mean what it, what it means in right, in the right. NFL or college football. Uh, so I think that's sometimes that can be confusing. I'm not saying you're doing it here, J Mark, but I'm saying for me, it's like, I'm like, Oh, and then you, you look and it's like hardly ever does a team just win by seven. Uh, mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like that. It's just the, the numbers are a little bit more wacky. Um, you like the over or the under J Mark. I like the under as well. Both defenses are very good. I think it's going to be a grinded out type of game. Mm. Mm. I'm on the over. They're on the under. Me and the bet detective are on the stallions. J Marks hopping in that showboat going down the old Mississippi River. Um, all right, uh, folks, before we get to the next two games on Sunday, uh, I want to tell you that the UFL Gambling Podcast is brought to you by Underdog Fantasy. Underdog fantasy is the easiest place to play fantasy sports. It's also the fastest growing fantasy app in the industry. And they added UFL late last week. Uh, J Mark, have they, uh, I haven't had a chance yet. Have you, have they uh, put up uh, next week's stuff? Uh, you I, know? Haven't I haven't looked yeah. either, but I imagine they're going to feel it. like it's closer to the closer to the, the games. They'll put up the stuff, but uh that is awesome that you can now get on over there and check out UFL, you know, stats essentially, and take the higher or lower on stat totals. Uh, that's how underdog fantasy works. Pick whether your favorite players will have a higher or lower stat total in this week's game for a chance to win big. You can win up to a hundred times the amount of money you enter in a single night. Uh, pick between two and five players to build a pick them entry. The more players you add, obviously the higher the odds go up. Uh, sign up today with the promo code TCE SGPN. You get your first deposit doubled up to a hundred dollars as well as an instant pickup special. Once again, visit underdogfantasy.com. Find them in the app store. And don't forget to register with the promo code TCE SGPN to get your first deposit doubled up to a hundred dollars as well as an instant pick em special. All right. Um, yeah, I think that's great that we got that stuff. Shout out to Frank Matthews. Love y'all's podcast. Best sports gambling guys in the game. Appreciate you, Frank. And, uh, yes, sir. We're grateful for you, brother. Yes, sir. Um, uh, no UFL and the underdog just yet, but it is coming coming soon. Basically. Yeah, they they put it out like I feel like uh, Thursday night, Friday morning. Mm -hmm. So get on over there, check that out, and uh, yeah, you can find stuff that you really you can't find elsewhere. That's I, I I know we get paid by a bunch of other uh, sponsors, but I feel like Underdog Fantasy is just yeah. I really use it frequently, so uh, I. I I buy in. I buy into that product. Um, Sunday's action. We got 
the interesting game here because Reed Sinnott was looking fire and the Houston Roughnecks obviously went out and signed the uh, old Houston gambler himself, Kenji Bahar. Mm. Uh, they are heading to Ford field. Michigan just never leaves Ford field. It, it's a shame because no one ever goes. So we're just forced <laughs> to watch this, this fan misery in uh, in, in Michigan. But I, the Panthers are laying two. They're a favorite. Seems like they're listening to us. Uh, J Mark on, on them being favorites uh, total is the lowest of the whole weekend. 38 points. Uh, Houston's plus plus one twenty five on the money line. Panthers are minus minus one fifty. Mm. Uh, I'm on Michigan minus two, but this is the type of game they do lose to me, but I think they're going to get it done because they're in the dome and them kicking the field goals. But I'll be honest. Like, I, am I crazy to think Houston's defense is actually decent? It's I think decent. Houston's it's decent. Yeah. Um, what, you know, I think it might be one of the better defenses in the yeah. league. Uh, I mean, Ruben Foster is just, he's a fucking freight train. He's like night train lane back there. Um, and, uh, you know, that will, in a game like this, I compared this on the SGP show to when Rex Ryan was the coach of the Jets with Sanchez. The Michigan Panthers are like the spring league version of that, where they have an elite defense, good special teams. Mm. But if you throw the ball 34 times with old EJ Perry, you will probably lose the game. So they need to not think that he's the next fucking Broadway Joe. All right. And I think they do win the game, Mm. but I think it's going to be an ugly one. I do love the under 38. I think this is a, uh, give me a, uh, give me a 15 to 15 to 12 final score. Um, this is the game though that I, I like if I had to, sh- to, to uh, mark the games I want to watch most, this is interesting just because I honestly think it's going to come down to the final, like five minutes of the game. Even though I think Houston's ass, I just think their defense will keep them in the game. Ruben Foster could make turnovers. Michigan wins the game though, because that's what, that's what the second rated power team does. They find a way to win the game. As long as it's not the stallions. Uh, I love the under though. The under is a fucking gold mine here. Uh, that detective, what are you doing here? Yeah, I was kind of surprised it was that high at 38 and a half. I would have put this around 36 or so like that. Um, it seems like a typical rock fight. Houston's defense is better than we thought. I mean, they, you know, um, like I said, I'm actually impressed with the way DC, um, could move the ball and they kind of shut him down after that, after that, um, and re- remember what Houston did to uh, the Memphis ground attack in week one. That's what I'm saying. Right. Like, Michigan might try to run the ball and they're not going to, ha- you know, they're just going to have to be Mike. Nolan's going to have to use patience. You get those returns where you're 12, you're nine yards or 12 yards away from field goal range. Mm-hmm. Another 60 yarder, just pound the rock. Now some Kenji, option read right. stuff. What's up? Kenji, now, Bahar? Kenji Barber was signed this week. Bahar, Bahar. Bahar. Um, them- <laughs> I From like Mon- I, I swear he fucking purposely does that. Um Babar, B A B A R. Shout out shout out to the doctor from Fletch who passed away this week before before OJ. He was the guy who died. Anyway, oh, um, love Fletch. <laughs> love Fletch. Remember the doctor? Now, now that's yeah. a strange name, Mr. Babar. He passed away. <laughs> uh anyway. Um Toby Johnson, I can pronounce that name correctly. Two times. Stud. Two time all Georgia US Bulldog. Yeah. yeah, he's a, he's part of that big deal. Been on the show before. Yes, fan of the program. They also have Adam Rodriguez from Weber State. D back out there. That defense is stellar. That's why the under does look like the best play on this side. Um, I like that Jets comparison. Even though it's the third time you name dropped being on the main show, J Mark. Have you heard that, by the way? <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> anyway, um, I got to side with Michigan here, though, at home. I mean, I think they're better. I like I, I like this Michigan team. They've surprised me. Um, you're right. It's going to be a tight game no matter what. They're not going to blow you out, but they're not going to get blown out. And I think they're good. I mean, I think that their opening win wasn't a fluke. I mean, yes, they got outplayed last week, but they had a chance to win that game against the best team in the league. And there's your there's their third consecutive home game. Is that what's going on here with that? Yeah. Houston and, um, you know, Houston had a tough game in the USC. So I, I don't like going against 0-2 teams, though. 
going for, for especially the game that they can win. I'm sure they have the circle as like, okay, this is a game we can get, you know? Um, I'm actually talking myself into Houston as I say that out loud, but that's not <laughs> enough. That's not enough to make me switch. Uh, now, now drunken Irishman might've just talked me into by saying <laughs> EJ Perry's going to get it done. If, if that's what I'm relying on. Cause he, let Perry, me tell you something. Yeah. He, he can't have, I couldn't believe they threw the ball 33 times with him. 34 passes by that team. 33 with him. What are you doing, folks? He Look. was skipping. He was skipping some of those passes. Like those were the rules. Like he's allowed to do that. <laughs> like, like it was only one, one hop. hop. We're, we're doing yeah, one hop, yeah, right? right? We're playing one hop yeah. ball, right? No, yeah. no, no. I don't know uh, what rule book you were given, but no, you, you have to get it to him in the air, sir. Well, and and to me, they're stupid. Like, yeah. If they just did option read and potential play action to the tight end Hikatini out of that, mm-hmm. it. It will at least it, just make it friendly for him. Make it friendly for him. I feel like that would like he can't have more than uh, to me. Like if he throws over twenty four passes, watch out because the, yeah, I don't. I mean, I'm starting to think my. The more I'm thinking about this, the more I'm looking Houston. Just <laughs> 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 grabbing the two is just a safe spot anyway and to get that first win. But, I mean, but dude, Michigan's oh, defense is gonna like their no, red zone defense I love, is incredible. I, I, yeah. I love Michigan. I mean, I, we love Michigan's defense. Those those are ballers. That's that's what you're betting on when you're betting on when you're betting on Michigan. You're taking Michigan's defense. You're not betting on EJ Perry. Um, I'll stick with Michigan. I'm not gonna flip flop and uh, under all day. Under is the main play. If I gotta do a side gun to my head, which I do it, which always it's a gun to my own head, I'll take Michigan right there. <laughs> Before every uh, Michigan Panther bet uh, game, I always put a gun to my head. Wait, what you, on what, ABC. What, what, why does ABC like why do they put this game on ABC? And not, I mean I know the Birmingham game is on Fox at night, but like I don't know. I'd rather have the DC Arlington game on ABC and then switch this over to ESPN or something like that. I don't know. I don't think they know what they're doing, but uh good point. Uh J Mark. What are you doing here? The old Ford field shit. Agree with you that the under is a play. Um, did you guys catch that sideline interview with EJ Perry where they, they asked him about one of those skip balls, but they kind of like you were under pressure and it looks like he kind of threw it in the ground to avoid a turnover. And he kind of stalled and he's just like, yeah, no, that was just That's a what bad I do. throw. Yeah. <laughs> no, that's just bad toss. That's what, what I, I do. do. I, I like if you watch my practices, I, I throw those warm burners. Um I mean I like EJ Perry. He's just limited in the towels. Somebody yeah. somebody needed to tell needs to tell him, like, just answer yes. Just be like, Yeah, I, that was the only way to avoid the sack. Don't say no, it's just a bad throw. Come uh, on, no, man. Clear not, well, not no pressure at all. Clear path. I saw the whole thing. My boy. arm just doesn't my arm just doesn't work sometimes. <laughs> well, here's the thing I find a little puzzling is okay. I know Danny Etling came in and threw a pass, but didn't Lewerke play for the Patriots a little bit? Am I crazy? Or maybe I'm thinking of Hoyer. Maybe I'm thinking of Hoyer more um, because they have Lewerke on the team that was in the NFL for a few years there. Mm. I guess, I guess he was, I guess he never got actually any reps. Why did I think he got reps in a game uh, in the NFL? He didn't. So maybe I'm just full of shit. Um <laughs> <laughs> but I, I okay. am taking I'm taking the under and I'm taking the Panthers. I know our buddy Coach K, he said he was all over Houston. Uh Reed Senate gave them a lift, but you see it at every level of football, right? College, yeah. UFL, NFL, CFL, where the backup comes in, he gives them that lift, and then the next week he's flat because they've seen him. They they they're prepared for him. Um, and that's what's gonna happen here. Panthers are gonna be ready for him, and I think they they might win this game off on a 65, let's say 65 yard field goal this time and win by three. What? I mean, can we build a scenario of Michigan blowing them out? Just like 17 to three or something. I think I said in the discord, I said 13 to three was my prediction on this game. Um, I don't know if I like them scoring a touchdown there. So let's say 12 to three, just all field goals. <laughs> No, I th- I think Houston will get a couple scores, but I'm just if I'm building a head, uh, you know, a a model in my head of how they blow them out. I don't think I, I I'd be shocked if Michigan got in the 30s. Would you like that? That would be oh, me. Sure. Like that would be they'd have to have a kick return for a touchdown and a pick six or something. Yeah. Um, b- but I do still think you lay it with Michigan. I I think Houston will score like 12 or nine or something like that. Um, but. Michigan covers. Let's go. All right. Final game on the Sunday slate or the week three, week three slate. Excuse me. Um, 
I thought this was the hardest game. Mm. St. Louis Battlehawks are heading to the house that uh, Johnny Johnny Dawkins built. Cadillac Anderson built David. Remember David Robinson used to have those rolled up socks. CJ, we should one of those coming back. Uh, <laughs> they're heading to the Alamo dome. To take on uh, the San Antonio Brahmas. Get this Brahma bullshit out of here. By the way, uh, look, the, the over is at 42. Brahmas are plus one Oh two on the money line. Home dog. Look, I don't think the Brahmas are any good. I think they're a phony two and oh, come at me, Reddit. Whoever the fuck you are out there, I haven't even checked. I haven't even checked. I've been busy with my life. All right. <laughs> but <laughs> I don't know who the fuck you are. All right. But uh are you, are you talking to Reddit himself, Mr. Reddit? Yeah, Mr. Reddit. <laughs> Mr. Reddit. Mr. Reddit over there. Yeah. Um, but I don't think San Antonio is that good. I think the DC game is misleading. Mm. Now, credit to them. They were, in my opinion, the better team that day. So they shouldn't be 0 and 2. But I also think a little trick play, some 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 lucky uh you know fumbles. Uh not not fumbles as in he actually fumbled on the field, but like blunders uh, by the defenders. I, I think the Battle Hawks are a more talented team. And I also think that the rant kid at a Duke, who I was a big fan of in college, he's gonna. I, I'm I'm starting to buy in a little bit on Tony Meatball. A little bit terrified because I will say this: Wade Phillips somewhat has the fourth down conversion thing more figured out than Tony Meatball. If it's fourth and inches. I feel like he's more, more willing to take a shot on it. Maybe that's AJ Smith. Um, but I'm taking the battle Hawks minus one. Uh, by the way, this is an over this is this they're scoring in the fifties or sixties here. Uh, battle Hawks minus one. I am sick of the San Antonio, uh, go down to the fucking river walk bullshit. Um, wow. this is nonsense. Wet. This is mm. look. They, they should have lost last week. They got dominated. I, I would argue with that with Mr. Reddit all day. When you have eight yards at halftime, when you have twenty-seven after the end of the third quarter, you should never fucking win the game. All right. Um. Anyway, <laughs> that detective, what are you doing here? Sounds like Reddit got to you too because they mentioned one thing about your wife in St. Louis, and now you're picking that you're riding yeah. the battle hawks. Yeah. Listen to yeah. you. I wonder. I haven't been over there to check. God knows what they're saying about San Antonio and her. Yeah, right. All right? That's true. Then, uh, <laughs> and as uh, Charles Barkley pointed out, the ugly women down in San Antonio in the river walk down there. Um, <laughs> yeah, Wade Phillips has got the fourth down thing figured out because they've unplugged his headset. It's not plugged. I mean, no one's listening. To <laughs> I he's love listening to his dad. He's listening yeah, to his dad. Son right? of a bum. Yeah, he's yeah. He's, he's, he's channeling his dad. Uh, and he is blessed though. He's just this blessed grandfather. Like they keep winning somehow. He doesn't know. They wait. They tell him we won. What yeah, happened? Exactly. We won the game. We won. We- oh, all right. Way happen. to go. Let's all go to Golden Corral. <laughs> anyway, um, <laughs> yeah. Like I said, I'm I'm way down the San Antonio team. I wanted to rank them below Memphis, but I just couldn't do it because of the because of the record of their power rankings. This and you're getting a juiced up this that. Uh, line as you ever can with San Antonio with them be, being two and no, I know people are happy about the CLV with the futures, but I think the battle Hawks after having a huge get huge comeback, great, uh, tough contest back and forth affair with Arlington. I think they might have a pretty easy, uh, time with this. And the only thing is the Wade Phillips magic. I like St. I like St. Louis a lot in this game and, and Wade Phillips. He was asked about his team. Uh, and this is what he said. And you know what? I'm jacked about another opportunity. <laughs> Like, I'm like, let's go. Now, I met with the team. There is no team. He had a speech for his whole team and everything, but there is no team. Uh, <laughs> I uh, showed uh, the wrong uh, locker. Yeah. <laughs> J Mark, what are, you, uh, what are you doing here in old uh, San Antonio, Texas? Uh, you're on mute. You're on mute. Uh, CJ, I'm, you say over or under? By he's, the way, he's back, Jamar. Well, I, I I never even thought about it, but uh, any St. Louis game I'm playing, uh, I'm leaning over anyway. They put up points and they give up points. Um, San Antonio. Now, even though they did have a tough time, but we said that Memphis defense is good. So yeah, well, I'll, I'll definitely be on the over for this one for 42. Uh, Jamar, what are you doing here? Well, I'm 0 and 2, taking the Battle Hawks, and uh, their defense sucks. 
And I think AJ mm-hmm. Smith is going to be able to take advantage of that. I think Chase Garbers and John Trey Kirkland, Cody Latimer, all going to have big days. Uh, so I'm all over the Brahmas. I, I know that surprises is the one that's usually pulling for the Battle Hawks. I just oh. can't be taking them until they prove it differently. So uh, yeah, I'm on the Brahmas here and the over. Uh, I think tide turning. I see as I remember, I was raised in the desert, but tides kind of turn. It's easy to see a tide turn. <laughs> Did I say they those do, words? Yeah, they do have great receipt. They do have three receivers that have huge numbers last week, but I think a lot of that skewed from that from the comeback situation they were in and getting that conversion. You know, it all happened within the last three minutes, obviously, or five minutes of the game. Um, but they should. They you're right. They should have a feast on St. Louis's defense at the very least. Battle Hawks, though, don't worry. They're doing it. They uh, AJ McCarron turned down the starting quarterback position for the uh, for the Kansas City Chiefs. They were gonna have him. He was gonna he was gonna beat out Mahomes in, in camp. Decided it now. Poor locker. I'll go to room the other team. In, I'll go to the other team in Missouri. It's absolutely better right. locker room. Better locker room conditions. I bet there. <laughs> uh, folks, uh, that is our our picks episode. But we got the DFS side of this right now. Um, but before we do that, I want you to know that the UFL gambling podcast is brought to you by a V O the premier sports betting arbitrage tool. If you're new to arbitrage sports betting, it's very simple. Basically betting both sides of a bet at two different sports books to lock in some profit. Uh, the AVO tool scans sports books, looking for discrepancies in the odds, and then tells you how much money you need to place with each sports book to expect a profit. The tool is super easy to use and lightning fast as speed is obviously such a big part of arbitrage sports betting. Uh, the best part is AVO is completely free to use without restrictions. That's right, folks. And it's completely free. Get started today at arbs versus odds.com. That's a R B S versus odds.com. All right, we are back and I'm going to kick your fucking ass in DFS this year, this week. This year, do we want to do lock and dog first? Oh yeah, I forgot about. It. Damn it! Damn it <laughs> I, I've been I've been licking my chops to, to talk shit about this DFS stuff because I did bring home a cool sixteen or fifteen fifty or something last week. Nice, hey, sure. You know, whatever it was, I felt great about it. Um, sorry, good. Sorry, I forgot. I forgot about the old lock and dog thing. Uh, the lock for me, look no further than the Arlington Renegades. Actually. Mm. Actually, well, they were my dog last night, but now that they're a favorite, uh, I'm kind of fucked because I don't have a dog. I'll, I'll give away a parlay. Chalk City over here, but they were a dog last night. But a, uh, a little Arling- ankle biter. Arlington. <laughs> Arlington's the one I feel best about. I think they're gonna they're gonna beat Lock DC's ass. Lock, Lock it up. up. And uh, I don't have a dog, so I'll just give you a parlay. How about that? I like. Uh, how about a totals parlay hmm. under 38 with Michigan Houston over 42 with St. Louis and San Antonio. And I like the over in Memphis, Birmingham, 40 and a half. I think you parlay those three see you in victory lane. All right. Mm-hmm. Um, Bet detective. What do you got? <clears throat> Uh, my lock is Birmingham. They smashed Memphis at night, Saturday night. Uh, my latest seven. Um, I don't really have a dog myself, although I wouldn't mind throwing Houston out there. <laughs> my dog now is all the to talk, but I'm not. I'm sticking with EJ Perry, Michigan. I'll also do, I'll also parlay some totals. I'll parlay that over St. Louis, San Antonio with you at 42, and but I'll parlay that with Arlington in DC, 43 and a half. I think that's a nice, easy over to start the morning, start the weekend off right. Oh, you only did two. Mm. You want me to throw a third in there? Oh, you want me to lock? I mean, <laughs> for God's sakes, everyone's on that uh, Michigan under 38 and a half. And, uh, I mean, it's impossible. Well, I don't get it. I'm sorry. That, um, that's, a, that's a free square. But yeah, we can do, you can do a three team if you want to throw it in there. I don't like go. that. I do not like the total in the Memphis Birmingham game. We'll stay away from that one. Mm, mm. Uh, J Mark, what are you doing here? Lock, lock and dog wise. I'm going to lock the Panthers to get it done. 
Uh, they they're gonna win by a field goal. It's gonna be a gross <laughs> game. <They laughs> That's win a by great a luck. Look, lock I know what I know. Lock <laughs> yeah. it up. Lock it they'll up. They're gonna, gonna win. <laughs> they're, they're minus two. They'll win by three. Lock it up. <laughs> yep. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's a guaranteed thing to happen though. I mean, uh, come on. Especially yeah. in the dome. I want to yeah, see this yeah. kicker when he goes outdoors. But do they play a road game this year? <laughs> do J-Mark, they play fucking J-Mark, road game? J Mark is right. A lock doesn't have to be a blowout. It just has to be something that's gonna happen. Yep. Lock that in. <laughs> Yeah. And then my dog is the Brahmas. I think the Battle Hawks defense are a bunch of frauds, and they got to okay. prove it to me otherwise until I will back them again. And he's so, the Battle Hawk guy. He's yeah, already, I was just going to say, that yeah. sounds personal, almost a reverse jinx. <laughs> if play, you pan whatever. the camera to the left, he's got a map of uh, the, the United States up on, and he's got a, you know, pinpointed the route to St. Louis for him to catch a game. <laughs> with a picture of AJ McCarron up there. <laughs> and, and his kids. Um, yeah. uh, but, uh, yeah, I mean, look, I'm gonna, I'm, I'm, I'm really excited about this DFS lineup because I brought home cash. I know Bet Detective hit for some solid money week one, but I brought home fifteen <laughs> fifty. All nice. right, don't forget about the fifty cents. I threw that in there. Never get forget about fifty. Went cent. to a bagel spot this morning. Needed fifty cents to put in the meter. Boom! Was that on a fifteen dollar entry. Uh, no, that was all like a $5 entry. So 30, I guess $30 entry. Guess I made $10 and 50 cents, but I, it felt good as I was getting my bagel, you know, I was waiting, I'm looking Being at my wet, car out there and I was like, West, you, Western bagel. Where were you? Yeah. I, uh, on, uh, on, uh, what, uh, Wilshire. Right. And I'm sitting there and I'm just sitting there, you know, thinking that's UFL money. It's UFL money right there. My car is sitting there. <laughs> That UFO money. All right. You know, you only need to, you only need 25 cents in the meter, but you know what? Take 50 cents city. Of Los yeah, have an extra quarter. Yeah. Told him to Told follow him. my picks. All right. Um, <laughs> if you would have, if you would have played Marcel Aitman, like I said, you could have parked in the garage. I, <laughs> that's true. <laughs> anyway, we all got dreams, right? Um, <laughs> quarterback wise. Yeah. I found this a bit insulting to me. Hmm. The OK Corral, Matt Corral, is only ninety nine hundred. It's been insulting to me. Mm-hmm. I think they were playing the best defense in the league last last week, and that's why they had a little bit of struggles. They're going to pour it on. I'm on the over for this game. Not buying into your under bullshit. You guys are trying to sell me, okay? <laughs> and the Golden Corral. Look, I I've, I've been to the great state of Alabama. The Golden Corral is everywhere in the great state of Alabama. Mm-hmm. All right, let me tell you. They're going to have some of that. And, and the UFL paychecks aren't great, but after they win, I do sense a little party at the golden corral with old Matt corral, 9,900. Get on over there. I know you guys are on the under, so you're definitely not taking them, but you're, you're fucking up here guys. <laughs> CJ, what are you doing at the quarterback spot? I mean, I like Corral. The problem, why, the reason why I wouldn't pay nine nine hundred for him is just one, they do a two quarterback system, as as J Mark was saying, and they it seems like they don't have it figured out. What did he throw for forty yards last week, Corral? I mean, like Adrian Martinez was, we seem to get the bulk of it, which is weird because in week one, Corral looked good once he got it going. You know, they knew um, they were playing Michigan. You got to run more. You got to run right. the QB more. Fair enough. Fair enough. Um, Here's some value. I'm going to go with the XFL MVP of the championship game in the rematch. We're going with Luis Perez at home in that game versus that DC defense that gives up big plays. Um, it'll be a little bit be a lot of turnovers, but also a lot of big plays at 8,500. I think Perez, who had a big game versus St. Louis versus a bad defense, but uh, he looked good. And that deep passes, ball, that deep yeah. ball should have been caught for a touchdown. I know you, right. YouTube, YouTube taught him how to throw that deep ball too. YouTube taught him um, how to throw that ball. YouTube taught him progressions. He checked good. He, you know, third longs. He made some big conversions and he made some big time throws. And we all know he was what calling he did. the plays. It was like back. It was like this football in the in the sixties and seventies. Like you, when your quarterback had to call the play. Yeah. You Kenny know, Stabler like this style. Is, oh yeah. You get a, you don't need an offense coordinator. The fuck's yeah. he here for? He just <laughs> collected a check. Get him so out of I, here. So this is the highest total of the weekend, 43 and a half. I, I like the over in it anyway. So I want a piece of this uh, piece of any, any of this game of offensive wise. And uh, start, I'll start right off with Luis Perez. You know, their OC is Chuck long. So, you know, Woo, Piggly Wiggly and Iowa told X <laughs> went to go to hell. <laughs> J-, J Mark. Uh, do they still, do they still uh, idolize Chuck long and Iowa? Or is that, is that passed over? I feel like they do with Iowa's offense. How bad it's been over the past fifteen years. Chuck, Chuck Long's Long still a Chuck fucking Long. god in Iowa. 
Yeah. Um, Truth. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, what do you What are you doing here at the quarterback spot, Jamar? Uh, surprisingly, I considered Perez, so I like that CJ. But mm-hmm. I went with the guy that leads the league in touchdown passes, and he's third in yards. Uh, Chase Garbers. I think he's going to have mm-hmm. a really good day against that uh, St. Louis team and that defense that just can't seem to slow the pass down. So yeah, I got Garbers. He's expensive, ten thousand four hundred, but I think it's worth it. Mm, mm, mm. Well, I'll stay in that game with my highest price running back, uh, Maceo Durant. Look, I loved this kid when he was at Duke. It's not often that I'll put it like this: my brother is a Duke fan in basketball and football, so mm. I watch my whole life. I've watched way too much Duke football. <laughs> yeah, right, and. They hardly ever have like offensive playmakers. You know, some every once in a while you have like a decent linebacker or safety, uh, maybe an offensive tackle or something. But you never really got guys that just pop off screen. Maceo Durant, when he was at Duke, I was like, who the fuck is that? Right. Uh, and I was surprised that they didn't run him as well. Uh, you know, like I know he got injured last year, but I thought in the first couple of weeks he played, but he they, they only gave him like a carry or two. And I'm like, this guy's got he's got talent. Get him on the field. Hmm. Uh, 7,300 Maceo Durant against San Antonio. We know Wade Phillips. He ain't coaching defense anymore. He thinks he's coaching defense, but there's no, he's not calling the plays. There's no team there. Uh, give me that 7,300 on Maceo Durant. Uh, Bet Detective, what are you doing at the running back spot? Um, well, until further notice, I'm going to ride CJ Marable until the wheels come off. He's my Abram Smith of this year. I think they're, I mean, they're the number one team. He's going to run and ball. And then no matter what, even if it's bad games, you know, he's getting the carries. He's going to have the opportunities just to score. So um, I know they do a two man uh, team there, but you have to in, uh, in football. So he's the guy, uh, CJ Marable. I mean, until, for, until further notice, he will be my RB one all year. And I know, like I said earlier, during the matchup prediction, Memphis does have the best rush defense in the league. But I think a lot of that was matchup wise. It's only two games into it. Um, it's gonna be a, it's gonna be a party there in Birmingham. So I think they, and they also run the clock out second half of this game as they won't Memphis won't be able to score. It'll protect their lead, and uh, I expect a nice eighty yards and a touchdown for Adam CJ. I like it. I like it. Um, J Mark, what are you doing at the uh, running back spot? I completely forgot to say we have a reoccurring uh, DFS contest on DraftKings. Mm. That uh, CJ, I don't know your name, but I know the damp basement was in there the first week, and then he was too scared to get in there the second week when I won. It. <laughs> uh, I didn't see it. I didn't see it when I answered. I, don't, I think you guys you have put it up late. I'm not the yeah, one. Late. Up, so I don't know how it got there. But. Hey, my where brother, is it? my brother where, puts it up. Where's it? I put it up late. I'll send you the link. Yeah, send me the link. The bet detectives is jumping in there. Not yeah. afraid enough. Uh, I also have Durant. I, I liked how he looked last week. Uh, he had, let's see, 14 carries, 104 yards, and a touchdown. They're going to need that, I think. They're going to need to try to slow the pace of the game a little bit. Um, so, yeah, I like Durant. And he's cheap. He's only 7,300 right now. I like it. I like it. And look, I went with the, I went back to the three running backs because they brought me home $15.50. Mm. There's more. There's more gold in them there hills. Um, uh, I'll talk about my other two running backs in a minute as they're my flex, but my wide Ooh, out, my, my top wide app, I'm going with, uh, I had eight men on my team actually last week. I know we just said that for comedic relief earlier, but I did have <laughs> him on my team and uh, he was fire last week and he'll be fire again this week. We're on the over in that game. Mm. 7,200 load up on Marcel Aitman because he's there. I think he's their top dog. And I don't have any faith in San Antonio's defense. Let's go. Battlehawks offense. Kaka. Let's go. Uh Bet Detective, I'm assuming you have him on your roster. Well, I've had him both weeks. Week one, he was around the five thousand range, and then they, like, he bumped up a little bit. And I say, Well, this is the last time he's gonna be priced like this. And I was correct as he's gone up in value. So now I think I'm gonna buy the dip in uh in Shepard, who did have nine targets, 12 targets. I'm sorry. Nine receptions last week for 82 yards in that shootout with 12 targets. Now, Marcel Aitman, who had a big game, obviously two touchdowns, two for a long bomb. He only had four catches under 14 yards, which was beautiful. Great production, but you can rely more on Shepard for volume. And if you're getting him at 7,500, he's come crashing down as Aitman comes up. I think the value is on Darius Shepard at uh, 7,500. That's what I'm going with. To, to uh, well, whatever. That's it. That's all my, that's all my commentary. 
Uh, J Mark, where are you going with yeah. your top wideout? Yeah, I like all your guys' both your points. I wrestle between those two because of the targets that Shepard's getting, but the big plays that Aitman's getting. It's hard to fade him right now since he is still mm -hmm. just 7,200. That still seems relatively cheap to me, especially when you look at guys like Kirkland that are at that 9,800 spot. So I have Aitman in mind. Let's go. Play about yeah. time. About time we play some music. You guys weren't. You guys didn't see me make fifteen fifty and just said we should tail some of Dundee's picks. <laughs> Technically ten fifty, but uh, um, well, look, my my second wide out. Hmm. Um, I I like I said, they're on a limited budget in in the spring leagues, so if it's not the Golden Corral in Birmingham, as a guy that's been. Shit hammered a good amount of times in Alabama and Louisiana. Mm. Well, it's going to be raising Kane's chicken and Dion Kane. Give me some of that because Dion Kane, 6,400, you know, he's explosive, mm. probably the most explosive guy in their offense, really. So I'm loading up. I don't think this showboat team, Carnell Lake, if he does that Dick LeBeau shit, which he does, good defense, but they 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 showed some weakness late in that fourth quarter against the pass. Deep ball is always open. Yeah, deep deep ball is always open. Let's go, Deion Kane, sixty four hundred, Beth Detective. What are you doing here? Well, Deion Kane, another one I uh, threw on there, week one. As I saw, as we saw, he became, became the man of championship week. I'm I'm proud. I'm proud of my guys, my big winning guys. <laughs> I'll, I'll just say that. Aitmans, Canes, and everyone. I'm glad. I'm glad they're getting their money, their DFS money. Um, but a guy I had last week who had a nice game. I had a huge Saturday in my DFS lineup. Didn't come through on Sunday. Uh, but the receiver, uh, DeAndre Davis. He uh he had six for 58 and a touchdown last week with nine targets. Uh, he's basically their only, um, let's say they're only receiving uh, John Adams is also good. He has, he has, it was more athletic catches. It seemed got like, Vinny Papali. and of course he got Vinny Papali in Delaware. Da, 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 Delaware. Um, <laughs> but Davis is their main man. He's a, a pure volume. Uh, Adams makes the athletic catches. Papali does the interviews, uh, but give me Davis there. And he is a relatively cheap, even 7,000. For a guy who's the number one receiver, um, and when anytime I like anytime you're up to, you're playing someone like Birmingham, you're going to be catching up. You're going to be from behind, and you're going to be throwing the ball a lot. So uh, game script, like that volume number one, seven thousand. I, I I expect him to put up another game just like this with the double digit targets, a bunch of catches, maybe seventy yards, whatever. Hopefully, gets in the end zone. Team speed for Christ's sake! You get Sorry, um, uh, J Mark, where are you going with your second wideout? Real quick, shout out to the chat. What's up, FBI Tugboat and Channing mm. Brown? Where do you guys play this? I, I play mine on DraftKings. I don't know about you guys. Yeah, but. no, D D DK, but also Underdog Fantasy. Yeah. Um, but but we are, yeah, right now, the prices we're using are DraftKings. We're doing And Shout out to Channing Brown, by the way, who's been with us all day in the chat room, part of the C Block. He was there for Bottom Line Bombs. He was there for the college experience, Bombs Down Under with me and Dundee. Now he's here for the UFL. And I'm sure. He'll be at old fashioned football after this for all four. Let's go. For all four in the chat for the, no, the king of Nova Scotia, Channing Brown. But yeah, we we'll get some draft things. These sure. other these other people. You mm -hmm. disloyal fool ass <laughs> bitch made. <laughs> uh, uh, yeah, I mean, um, I'm and draft kings. Like Kirkland, by the way. Yeah. Oh, okay. You love this Kirkland, this Kirkland kid. You know, you you love rostering him. He fits. He fits well in that. Uh, that offense now last week, it was Latimer that got more of that, but um, yeah, you can't I just, go wrong I, with, you can't go wrong with all three of those guys there, J yeah, Mark, especially true. against that awful defense, Stevenson, Latimer or Kirkland. I like Kirkland though for you. Yep. For sure. Uh, I ate shit on this guy <laughs> uh, last, <laughs> last week. <laughs> I, I would have won a lot of money if I had uh, not played Anthony McFarland. Uh, he did. He this shit, is yeah. the risk of this cha 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 air raid <laughs> bullshit. Is like you have a extreme talent and you barely give him the rock. I know. He needs to demand a trade. Give me a Lewis Perez bullshit trade for a backup uh, special teamer that has one tackle. Get off that mm. team. Go to Birmingham. Um. But uh, Anthony McFarland, eighty nine hundred. Look, we know St. Louis. You've been talking about it the whole episode, J Mark. Tony Meatball doesn't know anything about defense. Their defense is complete trash. McFarlane, he still won't get the amount of carries you want, but he's going to score. 
I look him to I, I look for him to break a big one against this uh this this you know caca pussy defense. So eighty nine hundred. I know it's expensive, but I still feel like he's one of the best players in the league. AJ Smith. Maybe you try to get him the ball, please. <laughs> Bet detective, what are you doing here? Bob McFarland, I think he steps up after a big bounce back game. I, of course, had him week one as well for the big winnings. And I knew when to drop him. I knew I didn't like his, I didn't like his uh, matchup in week two. I knew like those NFL guys, they, they do the one week, then they take a week off. They don't like to, they don't like to exert themselves over and over in, the, in this league. You know, if you <laughs> um, I came down cheaper. So I wanted to get a hookup for my Luis Perez. I wanted to get it in Arlington. Um, I, I eyed a Jay Payton, who is a cheap $4,500, by the way, um, who had a big game last week, five for 83, and he had a big rush. I, mean, you know, I think he led the team in a rush just for his one end around there for like 20 yards. But um, I want to go with an, an old, more an old faithful, and you see the president have a hookup with him, Sal Canella, old Sal Manella. Well, he's a, he's also cheap at $5,500. Uh, he, he had a great um, – touchdown on that uh after that bullshit pass interference call there's been a fun <laughs> mic'd up moment where Perez yells sal 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 that's what happens when i throw you the ball like that's just what happens and i think <laughs> it took him a while to get this connection i think they did um they did, did kindle up their connection so i think that, i think they're only going to grow from here and you get get it on sal canella now who is the best tight end in the league we thought at least last year and you can get him cheap now at 5500 i almost rostered him I almost roused him. Um, I like it. I like the play. J Mark, uh, your f- top flex. Yeah, I went with a, a different route there for the Renegades, and it's not a belief in Luis Perez. You guys know that. It's a fade <laughs> of that terrible defender's defense. Um, Tyler Vaughn's, he's gotten seven targets yeah. each week. Last week was able to convert those into a couple more points, but five receptions, 58 yards. I think he keeps getting that seven target uh, share. And like, like we all said, DC can't stop anybody. So I'm going with Tyler Vaughn's and he is 5,100. I like it. I like it. Sometimes it may be good. Sometimes it may be shit. Sorry. sorry. (laughs) Um, uh, my, my, uh, my, my, uh, my last flex. <laughs> just random. I like random noise things. Uh, <laughs> I don't know what Colby's doing back there. Yes, I just do. Just sipping that beautiful whiskey. Oh, you got there, there we go. That's, there for, we go. that's for old fashioned. There you go. Um, yeah. Coming up next, old fashioned football podcast. Myself, mm. J Mark, his wife talking about the NFL draft. And their silly ass kickoff will be brought up. Um, UFL kickoff way better. It is. Um, look, I know you 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 like riding CJ Marable. I'm going to uh, Ricky Pearson Jr. It's a little filthy play because he is a pussy pack guy. NC yeah, State former NC State kid, know, but 6100. He's their goal line guy. He's the guy, you know, I I, I think the, he's going to be stealing touchdowns. Brad Baxter, like uh, he's gonna be stealing touchdowns left and right. Derek Fenner, like um, <laughs> 6,100. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. Remember, he had like 16 touchdowns. One, yeah, one year, like 14 touchdowns. Like Chris just... Warren ran for like 1500 yards. He had yeah. two scores. Yeah. Um, Fenner, Fenner had 300 yards. Yeah. <laughs> 14 15 touchdowns. touchdowns. <laughs> All right. uh, at 6,100 though. I think Ricky Person Jr. is underpriced. I think there's value. I think he's a stud. And I told you, I'm on the over in this Memphis Birmingham. I like to follow my trends on the overs. Mm-hmm. So, uh, yeah, we're in cahoots here. Uh, CJ, what are you doing here on your second flex? Yeah, you can come after my Marable guy. I don't know. Uh, whatever. If I was looking at a cheap running back, I would look at Hagen's for DC at 5,300, by the way. He is their feature back out right there. But I don't trust a DC rushing attack anyway. Um, that line is a little questionable, but I will go with the DC passing attack. And, uh, and Kuti is a Kiki Kuti, Kirk Kuti, whatever you want to do it. He had nine <laughs> targets last week, even though you only had three for 40, another high volume uh, situation. <laughs> I'm sorry, you're making me laugh. Dan Marino and his uh, really dynamic <laughs> wife. <laughs> I mean, at this point, I do the names just for you guys, just for the yeah. for, for left. But uh, yeah, give me Kiki Kuti, 7,600, not, not expensive, but I could afford them with the flex with the uh, other cheap prices. Um, like I said, highest. I want I want all points of this DC Arlington game. Highest total on the board. I think there's going to be a lot of points. It will be over 50 points scored in this game. It'll be a back and forth affair. Um, they both teams are going to move the ball up and down. So um, give me any parts of this. So Kuti, nine targets. 
They had to replace all the receivers from last year. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, Channing Brown says, where do you guys play this? He can't get draft draft Kings in Canada. Well, that's why underdog fantasy use that promo code TCE SGPN. You can pretty much find, I think even better stuff over there. So yeah. Up and, on we'll, and, it w- and it will be on underdogs by Friday. Probably it's yeah. not up there right now, but it will the underdog will have these lineups in there. Yeah. So get on over, check it out tomorrow. Underdog fantasy.com promo code TCE SGPN. Uh, J Mark, where are you at in your final flex? Yeah, I followed uh, exactly what you were saying there with Ricky Person Jr. I wanted part of this uh, Stallions running game, but I could not afford Marable. And he's got the same amount of touchdowns as Marable. I know he doesn't get as many carries, but he still gets involved, and they throw the ball to him now and then. Um, I think it's really good value at 6,100. I, 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 I... So he's a wise guy. He knows what he's doing. I, I take these as personal attacks from both of you by coming after <laughs> my Marable by rostering. Fuck. He's following Dundee. Channing ridiculous. says he can't get underdog. Yes, you can. There's a thing called a VPN. <laughs> VPN. All right. There's always a way. All right. Um. But yes, v, get a VPN. Yeah. They'll, they're, they're, they'll think you're in fucking Dearborn, Michigan or something. You know what I mean? <laughs> You have no idea. They'll have no idea, and here you are playing the beautiful game that is underdog fantasy. Um, so check that out. And uh, yeah, defense. When it comes to defense, I'm going to stay by Dearborn, Michigan, because uh, the Detroit, or I'm sorry, the Michigan Panthers. That always confuses me. Um, at 4K, Reed Sinnott. I know he's from Iowa. He's been to that McDonald's. J. Mark always speaks about. Um, they're going to fuck them up. Yeah. And I think that's the play. I think we all smash this. I, if I had to guess, I think we all played Michigan's defense here at 4k CJ. What'd you do? I did play him at 4k. I played him last week. They the best team in the league. They played a good defensive regular game, but not fantasy wise. They only got a couple like three points, even though they did get a turnover, but uh, I, I don't care. I'm going right back. They're the best defense in the league, I think. And uh, yeah, in my 4k, why not against a horrible offense? Let's do it right there. with you guys. Uh, Oh, triple, Perfect. triple. I got music for that. Yes. I got music for that. We can do that. Triple lock on the Panthers defense. Oh, the eighties. Um, Perfect. All right. That's our show Let's folks. Yeah. Let's watch these ball games. Mr. Reddit. I'm coming for you. All right. <laughs> um, Hop on over to youtube.com slash at UFL gambling pod. Hit that like, hit that subscribe, folks. What are you doing? All right. Hit that like, hit that subscribe, check it out. Uh, also, the UFL gambling podcast is on Twitter at UFL gambling pod as well. Give us a follow there. Get on over to iTunes. Give us a five star review. All that good shit. Get on over there. Do it all. All right. Spotify, whatever. You can listen to it wherever. Um, yeah. Old fashioned football might have to be postponed because wife's work. Just subscribe to it so you know when we go live. Oh, so no show tonight, huh? Yeah, I don't think so. Okay. Look, it's like a it's 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 like a spring football league. You never you can never count on a team returning the next year. All right, uh, but it's okay. We're, we're, we're going to make it work. So subscribe yeah. to the old fashioned football podcast. I got the night off now, so I can go watch uh, Frozen go. Four. You know, nice. <laughs> Actually, I got a college baseball episode we're doing at eight o'clock Pacific time. So hop on over and check that out. Me and uh, Noah Beanick. Subscribe to the college baseball experience. The road to Omaha, you know, is happening right now. We're figuring out who's the best. Um, so hop on over there. And uh, yeah, what the fuck was I doing again? Oh yeah, we're all on social media. Uh, J Mark is on Twitter at J Mark Football. Give him a follow. Check out the Old Fashioned Football Podcast. CJ Sullivan, the Bet Detective, is on Twitter at CJ Sullivan underscore. Check out the Bottom Line Balance Podcast. I'm on Twitter at the Colby D. The check out the College Football Experience, the College Basketball Experience, uh, the CFL Gambling Podcast, uh, all the Sports Gambling Podcast. Let's go. Until next time, folks, this is the UFL Gambling Podcast. You better start thinking about yours. And we are out of here. <laughs>